Hello there, I'm Eric Renault, and this is a video for Photo Focus. And in this video, we're gonna use Photoshop to make a theme for PowerPoint, or in my case, Keynote. Now we're gonna take a lot of things into consideration here. We're gonna take into consideration asset generation, smart objects, and artboards. Some things that you may not normally use in Photoshop. Okay, let's jump in and see how it's done. So here I am in Photoshop, and I'm gonna create a new document. And I'm gonna come over to film and video because in here is a 1920 by 1080 pixel, 72 dots per inch theme or preset. And that's exactly right for a widescreen keynote or PowerPoint presentation. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that it is in landscape and that I tick the box for artboards and more about those in just a little while. Okay, 1920 by 1080 and let's click create. Okay, here we go then. So I've got my artboard all ready. Now in libraries, let me just tell you that I do have everything I need for this. I've got my color schemes and some graphics as well. You'll notice they are for tipsquirrel.com. I do a lot of training and I use a lot of slideshows. So I thought, well, why not make myself a nice theme for Keynote while I'm here. Okay, I'm gonna go and head and get a rectangle. And then with the dark tool perhaps, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to just click down here and in the middle, I'm gonna draw from the center 1920 pixels wide. There we go, 100 deep. Let's go for 200 and see how that looks. Okay, now if you've got older versions of Photoshop, then you won't be able to do that click down. You'll have to draw it out manually. Okay, that's looking a little bit too deep. So let's go ahead and change that to maybe 150 pixels. That's looking better. Okay, and I'm gonna drag that up and it's gonna go right into the middle. Now I'd like to have this, have some curves on it, and I'm going to cheat a little bit. You may think that I'm gonna use the pen tool here. No, not at all, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. So I am gonna go and get the direct selection tool first, and then I'm gonna select this corner here and just bring that one up a little bit, maybe to there. Okay, and I'm gonna say yes to this. I don't mind that it's not a live shape anymore. Then if I get my move tool, I can then I can go to free transform. I'm gonna say, okay, but let's try that again. Free transform, this time it allows me, and I can go into the warp. I can start pulling these up, and you'll notice then that we start getting these nice curves straight off the bat. Okay, I'm gonna do this one rather quickly, so it may not be as good as I would have liked it, but you're gonna get the general idea. Okay, let's take this one up a little bit, and then maybe take this up and this one up. There we go. All right, that'll do for now. Okay, I'm gonna click the tick and now I've got this nice curve at the top. I'm gonna to call this one dark top, dark top. There we go. Now I'd like to have another one underneath that. So I'm gonna go control or command J to duplicate that. And I'm gonna call this one light top. There we go. And I'm gonna change the color of that. Let's go and get my tool here and then go ahead and get the lighter color. There we go. With the move tool, I'm gonna to go to dark top and just nudge this down. I'm gonna use shift and down arrow just to nudge that down a little bit. There we go. That's looking a bit wavery, but that'll do for now. Okay. Now on the light, I can add some bits and bobs to that. So I might go and do that in uh, the effects. But let's first of all, let's go and take off these guides. We don't need those. So in here again, let's go and put some effects on and I might use a little drop shadow there. And I might also put on just a little bit of a pattern overlay. Now here I'm using this one here. It's called, when it comes up, Extra Heavy Canvas 128 by 128. And you can see I've got it into soft light. If I put this into normal, you'll be able to see sort of what it looks like. Okay, there we go. But in uh, soft light, it just gives us a little bit of texture at the top, kind of nice. Okay, I'm gonna say okay to that. And now I've got that going on. Let's go back to my library and I'm gonna go ahead and get my logo here. And let's drag that into the right place, the right size. Here we go, pop it up there somewhere. Okay, good, click the tick. Okay, I use the arrows just to nudge it around and make sure it's in the right place for me. And we'll say that that's done. Now I'd like a big squirrel in the middle, sort of like a watermark. So I'm gonna go and get my squirrel here and drag him out. 
using shift and hold this time to go from the middle in proportion, rotate him a bit. There we go. Click the tick, 0, 05 to make it 5% opacity, and then drag it down underneath everything. There we go. Uh, also, a little footer. So again, I'm going to get the rectangle tool, click down, 1920 by 100. Let's see what that looks like. A bit too big. So let's go 75. That's about right. And then let's move that down. There we go. And I might want to change the colour of that one to the lighter colour. Just so it matches the top. And then pressing Alt and clicking on Effects here, I can then drag that Effects down and add it or duplicate it to the footer. And there we go. We've got our first main template. Now I'm going to call this one Slide Main. So here where it says Artboard 1, if I double click, just like we would do with a layer or a group, I will say Slide underscore Main. And there we go. Now, like with groups, everything is held within that artboard. So it's like a group, works exactly the same as a group, but in this case, it's an artboard. And you'll see that slide main is now up here at the top left-hand corner of my slide as well. So we know exactly where we're at. Okay, now what I want to do now is to make this available to myself um, and anybody else that wants to use it for future. So I'm gonna to have to export this out. Now you may think that I'm gonna export this using file and export or save for web, not at all. I'm gonna make this even easier on myself. First of all, I'm gonna go and save this. So file and save, and I'm gonna save this for now to my desktop. So on my desktop, I'm gonna go new folder, and I'm gonna call this one uh, Keynote uh, Tip Scroll. And I'm doing this for, of course, photo focus. There we go, enter. Okay, so now I'm gonna call this one um, Artboards. Uh, keynote, Tip Scroll, there we go. There we go, now that's saved. So Photoshop now knows exactly where my main document is saved. So what I'm gonna do now is come over to Slide Main, double click it and rename it Slide Main dot JPEG and hit enter. Now nothing's gonna happen until I come up to file and come down to generate image assets. Now wherever Photoshop sees .jpg, it knows it needs to save that out as a JPEG. So indeed, if I go over to my finder here, let's go to my finder and we'll see that we've got Keynote TS Photo Focus. There's my original PSD and a folder has now appeared with the word assets on the end and inside that, is slide main, exactly what we wanted. So now we start to generate these slides really, really easily, or at least the theme for the slides. Okay, let's go back. Now I need another one that is just maybe the footer. So it's a blank slide, just the footer maybe. So to do that, I need to duplicate this. Just like anything else, I can control or command J to duplicate. But now I'm starting to think, what happens if I decide I'm going to change the pattern on the header there, or maybe even the colors? Well, for that, I might need smart objects. So if I change one, I'll change all the smart objects. Think of it if you use something like InDesign or Illustrator, it's an instance of that. So let's open this up, and I'm gonna say that logo, I'm gonna use the control or command key here, and click to go light top and dark top, I can then right click and put all of those into a smart object. I'm gonna call this header. Now that's a smart object. So I can copy this smart object over to another slide. But even better than that, inside this smart object, if I double click the header and then go dot PNG, because we're generating assets, when I hit enter, a new asset is generated just here, header PNG. So I've got all my opacity all there because it's a PNG file, which means that I can reuse this somewhere else. Maybe I want to give a handout or something like that at the presentation. That's all ready for me. All right, let's go back. I'm gonna call this rectangle down here footer. Now, although it's only one layer, I'm still going to make this into a smart object so we can instance it. So let's convert that to a smart object. And I can do the same for the squirrel as well convert to a smart object. Now I'm not gonna send those out as PNGs, 
I don't sure they're really necessary. Maybe the footer, let's do that just in case we might need a line or something. So P N G, there we go. And that's now inside my assets as well. Good. Let's make another slide though. So let's take slide main and let's duplicate that, Control or Command J, and that's actually gonna make a new artboard. So you can see the artboard properties has just come up there. Actually, it's come along just by the side of it. So you can see I've got two instances now. Slide main JPEG copy is the one I'm on. So let's change that to slide underscore blank. There we go. And then I want to turn off header and maybe I'd leave the other bits and pieces on. Okay, let's rename that slide blank dot JPEG. And now if I go back to my finder, sure enough, I've got slide main and slide blank all ready to go. I perhaps want one more. So I'm gonna close that one down and this one, and I'm gonna duplicate that, control or command J again. This time I'm going to go in there and sure enough, I've got everything I need, but I can't quite see it. Even if I get the hand tool and scooch around, I'm not really not sure where this is at the moment. This is a little clue, it's underneath. So let's look at another way of doing this. Let's take that off. I could have moved the artboard if I wanted to, but let's use this as an excuse to do something different. So I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna get the artboard tool. And when I do that, you'll see that I get these pluses um, around the active artboard, which in my case is slide main. If I click any of these pluses, a new slide or a new artboard will appear. And that'll do for me, that'll be good. Then I can come along to slide main, open that up, and I can get header, I can get footer, and I can get the squirrel. And then holding down the Alt key again, I can then just copy these up into Artboard 1, as it's now known, there we go. And I'm gonna rename Artboard 1 as slide underscore image dot JPEG. Now at the moment, that's exactly the same as main, but let's go ahead and put some other details in there, maybe a frame for an image. At the moment, I've got all three of them visible. I don't really want that to happen. So what I need to do is press the Alt key and click on one of the layers here or one of the artboards and it zoom in to that one. I can do that to navigate around as well. There we go. So this one, slide image. I'm gonna put a box in there. Just using the rectangle tool, maybe have a square even. There we go. Something like that. And I want no fill and maybe just a little bit of uh, an outline there, just to have as a frame for my image. Okay, let's go and have a look, see how we're doing. Sure enough, I've got slide blank, slide image, and I've got slide main, all easily done. Okay, so now don't forget that we did everything as smart objects, which means we can change anything. For example, if I go into slide main, and go to the header smart object, double click it, up it comes in its own little file. Then I'm gonna go on to light top, go in and get a different color, maybe the pink from his nose here. There we go, and save that out. Now this is gonna be reflected in anywhere else that that smart object appears. But also if I go to my finder here, without me doing anything else, you'll see that slide image and slide main both reflect that change as well. They've got that pink border. All right, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna put that back to how I like it. So I'm gonna go there and light top. There we go, close and save. There we go. All right, I'm gonna save this, file and save. Just make sure everything's hunky-dory. Now I'm come over to my presentation package. In my case, I like to use Keynote and I'm going to create a new document and I'm gonna choose something that's similar to what I want in wide, there we go, and choose. And zoom out to 50% just so everybody can see it. There we are. Now over on the right hand side here, I can edit master slide, and sure enough, this is gonna be the same or similar in PowerPoint as well. I can then start altering those. So for title and subtitle, I might want just my header and my footer in that. So rather than a color fill, I'm gonna to go to image fill, I'm gonna choose my image, 
which should be on my desktop in my Keynote Photo Focus artboards. There we go. And slide main and open. And there we go. That was easy. Okay, this one just needs the footer, so we'll come back to that one. That one's both, so we'll do image fill there. Good. And this one's going to be, well, that's going to be the image. So I'll come back to that one. And that one will do the image. Good. And of course, I can change the style of the text or anything else that I want to do here. Okay, I'm not going to go through them all, but we can see how that's shaping up. And if we come back to this one, well, we only want the uh, footer on this one. So I'll choose and I'm going to say, okay, this is a slide blank. There we go. And then this one was an image. So I can choose to image fill that with a different one with the image open. And then let's get rid of that picture because it's going to go inside that border. And there we go. We can very quickly make up our own templates or our own theme. There we go. That was easy. All because we used generate assets, we used smart objects, and we used artboards right there in Photoshop. I'm Eric Vrano. Thank you very much for joining me here at Photo Focus. Don't forget to join me at Tip Squirrel, where you'll find a written version of this tutorial, and there should be a link somewhere around maybe the bottom of the screen. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, and of course, come and see me back here at Photo Focus in the very near future. Until then, bye-bye for now.